Hey, how's it going guys? Ricky Summer here. Today I've come back in time to show you how I master my music. Cue the intro. All right, so before we get started, let's talk about mastering. What is it? I think there's a little bit of mystery surrounding what is actually involved in the mastering process. Sure, less so now than there was like five plus years ago. Back when I was studying music, no one knew what mastering was. At least no one that I knew knew what mastering was. It was this almost pseudo arcane mystical secret that mastering engineers sat on like a dragon on their gold. Now I think with more bedroom producers, you know, getting their stuff out there and figuring stuff out for themselves, we got a better handle on what mastering actually is. So yes, it does involve making your music louder. That's certainly part of the process. But the way I think about it, if mixing is taking all the tracks of your song and gluing them together to make a cohesive glued together song, then mastering is taking the individual tracks of your album and bringing them together, gluing them together into a cohesive album. So I think of it as macro mix, the mix of your album rather than the mix of your track. So yeah, we're gonna be making these tracks louder, but we're also gonna be, gonna be, gonna be doing a little bit of EQing and we're gonna make all these tracks, the four tracks that we're working with today, we're gonna to make them sound like they are part of a single project and they belong on a single album together at last, the way it always should have been. All right, so here we are in Reaper and these are my four tracks along with a reference master for my Emotion Overdrive single. I've just pulled this up just so I can refresh my memory on my process because mastering is not something you do often. You, you write the tracks, you record them, you mix them, and then at the very end, you master them. And I'd like to put in a, a little disclaimer here that I am not a qualified mastering engineer. I do have a bachelor's degree in music. It was a general course. So it involved performance, uh, recording, mixing, that they didn't really touch on mastering. Again, it's a sneaky arcane mystical art that no one wants to talk about. So this is, this is mostly stuff that I figured out for myself. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is pull up a new project tab here. And I'm just going to drag my songs, which I have already rendered out from their sessions. I'm gonna drag them into the project here. So I'm actually, I'm just gonna order them for my own sake, for my own organizational purposes. I'm gonna order them top to bottom. All right, next up, I'm going to put in some markers just so I can swap between the tracks real quickly. So I'm just hitting M to put in a marker at the start of each track. And this way we can just press the numbers and go to each of the four tracks. Isn't that fantastic? All right, so now I'm gonna put four plugins on the master track here. We're gonna start with EQ, and I'm just gonna use the standard Reaper EQ because I, I like how it works. It's visual, it makes sense to me. Then we're gonna throw in some compression. I'm gonna use the uh, solid bus comp for this one, and I'm just gonna set it to mix bus. Is that right? No, mix glue, I think we're gonna, we're gonna do. Uh, this is just to, like like the preset suggests, it's just to glue it all together. It's not really to make it pumping. That's that's something that we'd do in the, in the mix, something that I would do in the mix. This is just to like, just bring in the little outlying elements a little closer together. It's just like you made a sandwich and you just gotta grab it and squeeze it a little bit and you're ready to take a nice juicy bite. <laughs> Next up, I'm gonna throw in an exciter a treble enhance. So this, all this does, as far as I understand, is it, it boosts this specific frequency you see right here. So that's 5,000. We can adjust that if we want, but I'm just gonna set that to 5,000. And that's just to make it sound a little less muddy. I often find that once I render my tracks down and put them in a new session for mastering, they do sound a little bit more muffled than they did uh, previously. I'm not personally 100% sure why that is, uh, but throwing in an exciter, sort of fixes that, it, it, it boosts those, those higher frequencies um, and it makes it more exciting. And last but certainly not least, we're gonna throw in a master limiter. So if I can spell it right, we'll grab that master limiter there. And I'm going to start with this at seven, I think, minus seven. So this is going to give us our volume. So the next step is just to play through the tracks and listen for what you think is lacking. Maybe the bass is sounding too muddy, so you wanna try to isolate it. Just 
cut a couple of the frequencies either side of where you want the bass to ring out. Uh, same thing with the melody. Maybe the melody is getting lost a little bit or certain elements that you wanted to really ring out are getting lost. And of course you absolutely want to do the lion's share of your mixing in the mix, you know, in the actual individual track, in the track session before you've rendered it down and brought it into the master. And I admit sometimes, you know, I'll be mastering and I'll go, mm, you know what, actually I would like to change something. So I go back to the track and I change it and then I re-render it out and, re and bring it back into the master and then I keep going. So let's have a listen. Let's see if we can find an example. All right, here we go. On Night Grind, I think it might sound a little bit muddy. So what I'm gonna do is throw in an EQ and it makes so much sense it rhymes. So let's have a listen to this and let's play around with the EQ. All right, so you might notice what I'm doing here is boosting to find the frequency I want to hear. If I feel like I'm, I'm missing an instrument, missing a certain frequency, I'll, I'll try and find it. And I think what I want is around 2000 and it's not going to be boosted that much. Like mastering is super subtle, man. If you, all right, so like we're just going to do like one, one dB here. But if you find that you're wanting to pump it more than one dB, dude, go back to the track, go back to the mix and fix it there. Don't fix it in the master. That's, that's too much. That's too heavy handed. So just one DB, which could even be too much in and of itself. Um, and I'm just going to cut the bandwidth on that too. Let's just, let's just say 0.5. All right. I'm going to play that, that one again, but without the EQ. See how subtle it is? It's, it's actually ridiculous. <laughs> Once you do all this EQing, you'll, you'll listen to it and you'll go, it doesn't sound any different. And then you'll cut it out and you'll go, oh yeah, okay, I get it. I get it, man. It's just, it's just to make it pop a little bit. It's going from, yeah, this is good, but maybe a little flat, a little dull to, oh, this is good and it's bumping, it's popping, you know? Okay, so... Let's see what else we can add here. All right, here we go. Here's another great example. Around 700, I think I don't really like that sound. Let's have a listen to it. You hear that? Let's see if we can isolate it. So I'll pull down the bandwidth. Is this kind of, it's, it's throaty and weird and I, I don't really like it. So what I'm going to do in this case is I've found it, I've isolated it, I've boosted it so I can hear it and now we're going to get rid of it, right? So let's, ha let's see how heavy handed we can be just, just as an example. So like we, if we boost it up again, there's a, there's a section of it that sounds underwater. It's gross, but we're just going to pull it down. Minus one DB, super subtle, right? You can barely even see it. And now we'll get rid of the EQ. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but as soon as I brought it back in, you could hear the, the, the whining lead kind of, it lifts and it's so subtle. Like you wouldn't even necessarily be able to pick it. You just know something is different. That's, <laughs> I think this is my, this is the most fun I have in the, in the recording mixing process. I love mastering. It's just the subtle little changes that, that take it from, this is a good track to this is a rad track, you know? So that's what I'm talking about. It's just super simple just tiny, just little subtleties there. Okay, so you might be wondering if we're EQing per track, and yes, you will be EQing per track because you don't want to, you don't want to add like one EQ to all your songs. It's it's not it's not going to work. Uh, but there is an EQ here on the master track. So what you might do here 
is roll off the very, very top and the very bottom. What I like to do, because I don't have a sub, I just, I just get rid of, I get rid of the sub frequencies. I don't want to hear them. So I tend to do that on the, on, in the individual tracks in the, in the mix. Uh, but I, I think I might just, just for good measure, we'll roll off 40 hertz and below. Can't even tell the difference because I can't hear it. I can't hear it in these headphones. I haven't got the facility to hear those sub frequencies. I mean, like if you want to be real cautious, I guess you could do um, 30 or below. I think, I think technically my monitors and my headphones, um, they'll go down to 20 Hertz. But again, this might be a case of just because I've cut it in the mix, I'm not hearing it in the master. Uh, and that's fine. But you know, I, I just, I just, I like to be extra cautious. I, I can't hear those frequencies. So I don't know what they're going to sound like just in case someone listens to my music with a, a big beefy sub. I don't want that sub to sound gross, you know, so get rid of it. I don't need it. I don't need those frequencies. And again, you probably won't be able to tell the difference, but just in case there's something there, cause like you, you can't, you can't listen to your music on every possible potential speaker setup in existence. You should listen on as many setups as you possibly can. I got a Bluetooth speaker that I listen to. Uh, I listen to on my, uh, listen to it on my studio monitors as well, on my phone, in the car, wherever I can. I'll listen to it on the TV, wherever I can, I'll listen to it. All right, last thing we're gonna do is just add a little bit of compression on each track so we can get them to a, a more comparable volume. As you can see right here, Police Cops is loud and funk punk is really not. So let's have a listen to Police Cops. That's, that's like, that's right up there. And then we go to funk punk. You can see it's, it's quite a bit quieter. So I'm going to put in a little bit of compression. I'm going to use the Scarlet compressor just because it's what I like. I'm used to it. Uh, and I'm just going to bump the input just a little bit because we don't want to color the sound and we don't want it to, to freak out. Like, let me, let me show you an example. If I add a preset here, like let's go maximizer. See how it's sort of like, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. Phasing in and out, like you, when the bass plays, it's like, it dominates and everything else comes down. And then when the, when the bass stops, everything else comes up. It's horrible. It's ridiculous. That's why you, you just want just a little, just a subtle little compressor there. And we'll cut it out so we can hear the difference. You hear the difference? It's quite a bit louder with the compressor. So we're just going to adjust the compressor settings so that it's a little more comparable to our louder tracks. Now, ideally your tracks will come out more or less the same volume, but that, that doesn't always work out as you can see right here. All right, last thing we're gonna talk about is volume. So a word of warning, I am far from an expert on this. All I know is what I've been able to scrounge off the internet, but it seems like the streaming platforms have a certain hard limit for volume and it's measured in something called LUFS. Ah, it's, it's a big complicated thing and I don't wanna go into it, but I'm going to hopefully explain to you practically how to deal with it, even if you don't know the theory of it, because I, I do not feel qualified to, to teach you <laughs> exactly what that means and, and how that works. But essentially, each of the streaming platforms has a different limit. I believe, for example, Spotify is 14 LUFs, I believe. There are various plugins you can use to figure out how loud your music is. The one that I use is Ulean Loudness Meter 2. This was free. And so essentially you just, you slap that on the, on the master track and then you play your music. All right, as you can see, it's about 16, 17 LUFs. We want it around 14 because that's what Spotify is. We can double check that. All right, so it gets a little bit complicated here. When you go to artist.spotify.com, FAQ, and then go into the mastering section, 
We've got a question here that says, can listeners adjust the levels of my music? And their answer is premium users can choose between the following volume normal normalization levels in their app settings. Loud equaling 11 luffs, normal equaling 14, and quiet equaling 23, right? So normal is the default. That's what most people are probably gonna hear. I actually didn't even know you could adjust the loudness in the settings. Uh, and I, I am a, a premium user of, of Spotify just so that I can get access to my artist page and whatnot. So that's interesting. So let's master it for 14 luffs. So that's what I've been doing uh, most recently. So that's what we're gonna go with. So we've got 16 uh, 17 luffs, which means it could be louder. So if we go to our compressor over here, let's just pull that up there. Let's have them both on the screen at once. We can boost that a little bit until we get to 14. There we go. It's just super subtle, guys. I actually decided not to adjust the input at all. I just boosted the output just ever so slightly. You probably can't even see that I've adjusted it at all, but I, I pulled it up way too far and then I brought it back bit by bit until we're hitting around 14 there. And I'm, I'm happy with that. So then we go to the other tracks. So we go to Police Cops, which is quite loud. Let's go to the end where it's loudest. <laughs> Would you look at that? It's ended up being exactly 14 and I haven't done anything to it. That's just straight out of the mix. Uh, but I actually would like to maybe bring that back just a little bit. So I'm going to do that here at the fader level. Just going to bring it back one dB. Let's have another listen. All right, so what I might do here is bring it back 2 dB and I'm gonna slap the compressor on it. So we'll handle it the same way we've handled the rest of the tracks. Where is my compressor? There she is. And there you go, that's much closer to the rest of the tracks. So don't forget this is minus 14. That means if we go to minus 13, it's actually louder. And minus 15 is quieter. So I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to get it exact because I, you know, I don't want everything to sound so homogenous, so the same that it's boring. You know, that's a big issue I have with modern music with pop music in particular it's so over compressed there's no interest there's no light and shade sometimes i like the music to get quieter if you know for dramatic effect because then when it comes back in it's exciting right so i'm trying not to over compress and i don't want everything to sound exactly the same i all i want all i want when it comes to loudness is for the listener to not have to adjust their volume from song to song that's it that's, that's, that's my only goal. So I know it got a little bit intense towards the end there, but that's the process. It requires a little bit of trial and error and everyone's music is gonna be a little bit different and, and you're gonna to wanna to mix it and master it in a slightly different way. But there is a process and let me just recap. So on the master track, we've got the EQ. What I like to do, roll off the top and bottom, essentially getting rid of the frequencies that I can't hear because I don't wanna deal with them. I just, if I can't hear them, don't want them in my music. Then we go compressor, just something super subtle and soft to glue it together. We're just squeezing that sandwich, ready to eat, right? Then we've got the exciter so we can boost some of those interesting frequencies, the ones we like to hear, the melodies and, and the vocals and that sort of thing. Then we throw in the master limiter to push the volume of the tracks. And finally, we throw in our meter here so we can adjust the volume of each of the tracks so they're more or less the same. Then of course, on each individual track, we slap on an EQ so we can just do some minor, final, tiny little adjustments to get it sounding exactly how we want. And then of course, a compressor to aid us in adjusting the volume so that everything is as loud as we can get it without it sounding gross. <laughs> right? I swear to God, if you guys are over compressing and ruining your music, I'm going to be mad. Um, so we do, yeah, we do want to make it a little bit louder and make it pop, but we don't want it to be ugly. 
We don't want to over compress. We don't want it to sound so squished that it's just like just one volume all the way through. You know, we can see peaks here and that's cool. I want to, for the most part, I want to preserve those peaks, those exciting moments where, you know, you're trucking along with a groove and suddenly go, 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 pow, and it explodes. And that's the fun part, dude. That's what gets the blood pumping, in my opinion. Uh, and that's it. That's, that's the process of mastering the way I do it. Is it the definitive correct way to do it? No idea, my dude. Most definitely not. Again, I'm not a professional mastering engineer. I'm not qualified as a mastering engineer, but I do do a lot of research. I am trained in music and in recording and mixing to a certain extent. And I, I like to play around with this stuff and I, I do a lot of trial and error and I figure, figure out what works for me with my music. And this is, this is how we do it. All right, thank you very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to gently caress that like button. Throw any questions you might have in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. And if you've got any topics that you'd like me to cover in a future video, throw those down there too. All right, I'll see you next time, guys. Ricky Summer, out.